Namaskaram Sadhguru. In one of your quotes, you say that we should not judge a person's spiritual evolution based on their behavior. I am unable to understand that because I have always believed people who are kind and compassionate are spiritually evolved. Could you please help me understand the context of that quote? Well, <laughs> uh, see, uh, at one time, at a certain segment of my school going time, I can't call it education, but school-going time. Uh, I was in certain type of schools where moral science was an important part of their thing. I was in missionary schools, so uh, they are always trying to teach us three magic words. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 you have to wait for me for the second cough within the thirty seconds, that's not coming. I've been tested and certified, okay? Magic words. I'm sure all of you have gone through those magic words. What are the magic words of? What? No, not… that's not the order. Sorry is not the order. What are you up to? Huh? Sorry is not the first one. Please, sorry and thank you. Well, you can learn such tricks. I'm not saying you should not say this. If the magic is happening within you and those words came, fantastic. No magic in you, you just got the words. You have a sense of entitlement. But you say, please, doesn't mean anything. It's better at least you show who you are. Oh, please gonna have it <laughs> and anyway you grab it. I see this all the time. And you then kick somebody in their backside and then say sorry, doesn't mean anything. You take what you want from everybody and then say thank you as if they gave it to you. No. These things are supposed to represent that you have no sense of entitlement. You understand that nothing really belongs to you here. So even if you want a glass of water, you say, please. If you really see it that way, even a glass of water or a morsel of food doesn't belong to you. Fortunately, it's available to you. So you say, please. Wonderful. Anything that you do, you may be hurting somebody, you may be stepping on something, knowingly, unknowingly. So if somebody even looks at you and says, sorry, what? If you're feeling that way and thank you because you have a sense of gratitude that's everything that's come your way genuinely. So the word may come or it may find some other expression, What should be a magic within you? 
happens only in your behavior, uh, that is a tragedy of moralistic societies. That they do all the right things, but nothing right happens within them. So behavior does not determine one's consciousness or one's evolution or one's transformation. Well, if you have a certain s what spiritual evolution means is, from being a hardcore concrete, concretized individual, you become little more porous and becoming more inclusive. Out of your inclusiveness, you may do many things. If things are happening out of your inclusiveness, your gentleness, your loving nature is coming out of your inclusiveness, fantastic. But if it's a formula that you have learnt, that you know by doing these things you will get what you want. Actually that's how it was taught to us in the school. You do this, use these three magic words, things will happen for you. So go and say please, as soon as you get something, turn around and say something else. This was happening around me. <laughs> so, your behavior does not determine who you are. People can cultivate behavior, but who they are needs transformation. Transformation essentially means that the sense of boundary that you had about yourself, this is me, this has enlarged. That's all the transformation is. Transformation is not of social behavior. Transformation is, if you sit here, what was me was just this. Now what is me is much larger than this, that's all. Out of that, whichever way you behave, it's okay with me. But there must be inclusiveness. Because inclusiveness is better than insurance. Once you see something as a part of yourself, then what is there about thank you and please and sorry and things like that? It doesn't matter because when you see the other as yourself, I treat everybody as I treat myself hard. If I was treating myself nicely like this, I would have treated you also like that. Because I treat myself rough, I'm treating you also rough, okay? Or you want me to be nice? Please, I say this in the earlier... In the beginner's programs, I always say, please close your eyes. Hello, I do. <laughs> because I know you have difficulty closing your eyes, I say, please close your eyes. You come to Samyama, and there also you want me to say please, I say just shut up and sit. <laughs> By then, you should have understood the significance. Right now, this is just the second, third day of the lockdown. First day you did not understand, by now you should have understood what it means. Now we cannot say, please keep six feet distance. We'll have a six foot stick and push you like that because in three days if you still did not understand what is six feet. Hello? It doesn't take three days to grasp what is six feet, even if you're illiterate, you can get it. You don't need any mathematical qualifications. So now uh, government is having army standing by, just in case you still don't understand what is six feet. Yes, <laughs> this happened. What happened? So one day Shankaran Pillai came home, 
his wife complained about their twelve-year-old boy that this boy is not listening to me, you have to fix him now. So the Shankaran Pillai went about looking for the boy, boy was hiding in the garden. He caught him by his ears and he said, you fool, do you think you're better than me, that you don't listen to your mother? So, your behavior, well, if you want to be in a society, uh, yes, of course you have to regulate your behavior because it's not just about you, it's about everybody around you. But what we are looking for as good behavior is not necessarily saying specific words, doing certain things and not doing certain things, no. What we are looking for is that you walk into this hall, there are fifty people sitting here, your concern in every step and every breath that you take, your concern is for these fifty people or just you, that's all that matters. If your concern is for all the fifty people who are sitting here, then you behave one way. If your concern is just about yourself, then you behave another way. This is all you need to fix. Spiritual process is not a social thing, it's something that you do within yourself. Because something within you changed, you may also address the world in a certain way. A whole lot of spiritual people, immensely evolved human beings, they did not have social skills. That's why they kept away from the society. <laughs> You heard of Sadhguru Sri Brahma, he had no social skills, lot of trouble. This time around, we come with little social skills. Yeah, I'm doing well. Still little friction with some people, but they're always there. That is an indication that we are on the right path that we are doing the right things in the world. Because if those people praise you, then you must be doing something really wrong. So, one's spiritual evolution need not be judged by their behavior. Now, don't take this as a license to behave irresponsibly, saying, I'm spiritual. There is that... that tribe also exists in the world. Because they are spiritual, they think everybody is supposed to understand them. They will do weird things, everybody is supposed to understand. No, no, that is not the thing because spiritual process means you're not identified with your physical nature, your identity has moved to a dimension which is not physical. Once your identity is not physical, then you have no specific way of doing anything. You will do it whichever way it's needed. Soft, soft, hard, hard, wonderful, wonderful, nasty, nasty, whichever way. Whichever way the situation demands, you will respond in that sense because your identity is not with your physiological and psychological process. Your identity has moved beyond physical dimensions of who you are. So, you have a certain freedom. A cultured behavior means you're fixed to be in a certain way. That means you lost your freedom. Out of your freedom, when it's required to be nice, you're wonderful. When you're required to be nasty, you're nasty. Whatever is needed, accordingly you do. You are uh, driving now because not many vehicles out there, so cows, buffaloes, all kinds of things are on the road. A group of buffaloes are going there. You can say, please, please. They just go like that. Please. No response. Ha! The little. Pick up a stick and say, ha ha. Then they'll go. 
because they don't understand what is this please you're talking. Now you're not trying to treat the buffalo badly. If buffalo understood what sweet words are, you would uh, say, you know, sweet nothings to the buffalo. But he doesn't get it. He must understand that you don't like him where he is right now. You must make him understand, he shouldn't be on the road, you need to use it. Somehow you make him understand, you don't have to go and beat him, at least some noise you have to make. Otherwise, he will not move because he doesn't understand. So if you're dealing with a child, you do one way, if you're dealing with an adult, you deal, lead another way, somebody that you know one way, somebody that who is new to you another way. Our behavior is as the situation demands. Now you fixed yourself, this is the way I behave. Even if the situation doesn't... is not, uh, you know, conducive for that, you do the same things, what is the point of that? Any action which is not relevant to the situation which you exist is irrelevant action. So fixed activity always becomes irrelevant in various situations. It is very important that we don't fix our action, we just fix who we are. This is what... You know, I am not a scholar like this, but this is something that stuck with me. Krishna said, yogastaha kuru karmani, first establish yourself in yoga. That means, establish yourself not in your individuality, but in your union with the existence, and then perform action. That means, you're absolutely inclusive, then do whatever is needed, it's fine with me. <laughs>